That's why I've come to Ireland. I'm hoping that a recent survey of the DNA of over 2,000 Irishmen will tell me something about my paternal ancestry. The geneticist who conducted that research is Dr. Dan Bradley. Guys, this is Professor Gitz. He's tracing his roots using genetic genealogy. Uh, Tim, Katrina, Emma, these, these, these are all guys in my lab. How are you? Do I look like an Irishman to you? <laughs> I'm here to find my roots. I've been looking for my roots. I looked all over Africa, couldn't find anybody, so I ended up up here. After you, sir. This is my mm -hmm. Y-DNA, which we brought. Yes. Maybe there's some pattern that you can ascertain in my DNA. Well, we, we had a, a look at, at your, your, your marker profile here, and um, I can see here that some of these markers are markers that, that we've typed as well in our, our survey of Ireland, and uh, matches don't, don't happen by chance, really, not, not over a large number of markers. Um, 10 out of 11 match, uh, Neil of the Nine Hostages. Neil of the Nine Hostages. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Neil of the Nine Hostages probably lived about 450 AD, so a long time ago, mm -hmm. and he was a warlord. Does this mean that I am descended from Nile of the Nine Hostages? It looks like a pretty typical Neil haplotype, yeah. Wow, that's great. I'm surprised myself that I have a kinship relationship with this set of families and ultimately an individual, and that I have so much in common with them genetically is uh, astonishing to me. That's right, yeah, hmm. yeah. I wonder if this king could have ever imagined that he would have descendants whose mother was a black slave. I'm so curious about this revelation that I've traveled to Tara, Ireland's ancient seat of kings. I want to stand on the spot where my ancestor once reigned, an ancestor, it turns out, that I share with almost 10% of all Irishmen. They gave me a DNA test yesterday, and I'm descended from Nile of the Nine Hostages, the king. Well, actually, I'm an O'Neill, too, or married to O'Neill, and I believe that we were descended from the kings. So your husband and I are cousins. How about that? Delighted to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you well. And the best of luck. With I your hope film. you enjoy your stay here and find out plenty about your ancestors. Oh, well, yes. thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've You're only been, on. I've only been Irish for 24 hours. It's a lot of fun. I like <laughs> I was told I'm supposed to let Guinness settle, right? You have a coin, you're supposed to tap it? No, no, wait till it gets black. Oh, I like that. I came to Ireland in search of my great-great-grandfather. And now, compliments of DNA analysis, I've ended up with three million new cousins. I'm only part Irish. I don't think I got the beer gene. <laughs> None of whom look quite like me. Oh, man, that's good. Another guest whose DNA yielded unexpected results is the Reverend Peter Gomes. So, Reverend Gomes, let's see where we are. On your father's side, we can only go back to your grandfather, Manuel Lobo Gomes, who was born on Cape Verde around 1890. Now, remember I told you about the Y DNA that you inherit from your father? We ran that through our worldwide database of samples. It's sort of like CSI. And when we find a match, mm -hmm. bing, mm -hmm. that's where we are. If we could find someone with the same fingerprint, then we found someone with whom you share a common ancestor. Here's the printout of the results from the database of people who matched your Y DNA. Ashkenazi, 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 Safadi, Safadi, Ashkenazi, 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 Kohan, Cohen. As you well know, these are designations for subcategories of persons of Jewish descent. So we feel confident in saying that on your father's 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 side, Peter, you are descended from a Jewish man. Well, that's uh, surprising, <laughs> to put it mildly. Uh, every family worth belonging to has a Jew in it somewhere or other. <laughs> so I guess uh, that shouldn't surprise me. The logic is inescapable. Curiously enough, among many European matches for my mitochondrial DNA, there were three Ashkenazi Jewish people as well. The more we use DNA tests to trace our family trees, the more we're going to discover just how tangled our roots really are. We are all mulattoes of one kind or another. In the end, what actually makes us black or white? 
or have those terms become outdated? In the last census, it was white, black, or other. And so many people, black people, because they know that they're cobbling Asian or, <laughs> or 35 percent white, right, would not put that they were African Americans, but other. Does that bother you? Yes, because we don't get, as a people, certain rights mm -hmm. from our federal government because we're not, because, because we are now the second minority. Mm -hmm. Right, after the Hispanic community. After the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. Hispanics don't have other. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. We got it's other. other. Yeah. I make my living communicating to African-Americans. Mm. Eight million listen to my show. So I'm a race man. So the people with just a little bit of black ancestry, African ancestry, are just as black as the people who are with 90%. Yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things. Once you get a little black on you, you're black. Yeah, that's right. It's, you're in the matrix now. You can't, you took the pill. Like, you just in, man. Okay. Let's spread them out like sure. this. Sure. Get these, like this these ones, yeah. One person who was in the Matrix but didn't know it was the author Bliss Broyard. Bliss grew up believing that her father, the New York Times critic Anatole Broyard, was white. Um, that's my father's grandfather. In fact. He had deep roots in the Creole world of New Orleans. Well, look at that. I, I love know. this photograph. <laughs> I know. That's my man right there. I know. <laughs> Bliss has spent the last 10 years trying to piece together the story of her newfound family. She recently took an admixture test to see how much African ancestry she actually has inherited. For you, with our special test, yes. these are your results. You're a bit more Negroid oh than you thought. Oh, my goodness. You are 17.2% African. West African. You're almost 20% black. Wow. 17. 17.2. Does this make you black? I sort of think of myself as like an expatriate in the black community. And I think <laughs> that um, being black is not a, you know, a result of my DNA tests. Um, it's not finding out that I have this uh, ancestry. It's, it's, it's experience. And uh, it's the way that you've lived. And so, you know, I, I think of myself as somebody who has mixed race ancestry. And I feel like I'm kind of a cousin to, to blackness, but I don't think I've sort of earned the right to call myself black. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that, but here he is. He's I like actually, him. Yeah, Stone. yeah, it's nice. It's very uh, discreet. I fully respect Bliss's choice. And I admire her modesty about claiming to be black. But the truth is, Lots of black people have less African ancestry than she does. Being black in America has never been about one's color or facial features. It's more a state of mind. Is being an African American then cultural rather than genetic? For me, it's both. For me, it is, it is absolutely both. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, genetics, I mean, th this is who I am. I'm, I'm a black woman. Um, and Culturally, I have grown up in the African-American community. Without a doubt. Right. And that's what you know. Right. Except fried chicken you had on Sunday. Uh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. There's a great line. You are what you have to defend. Hmm. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that I'm 19% European and 81% African in America. I have to deal with the problems that black people in America have to deal with. <laughs> right. I have the struggles and challenges that black people in America have. It's no wonder then that so many of us feel such a deep connection to Africa, even though our ancestors left that continent at least two centuries ago. How many countries have you visited in Africa? Uh, Uganda, South Africa, mm -hmm. Chad, Darfur, I've been to Sudan. You've been active in the Darfur campaign, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Africa. I want to go back. Because I've, you know, mm -hmm. I felt, felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt good. Why do you think our generation, Peter, is so much more interested in our African past than any other generation of African Americans? Everybody's interested in their own past. 
And I think we have bought into that. So we want to know more about where our people came from. And not in order to return there, but in order to say, you know, we are connected to something other than this American experience. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants their history to begin here. Because in our case, if it just begins here, in general, it's not a very happy history. Absolutely. One of the most important projects helping us resurrect our history in Africa is the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database. Led by Dr. David Eltis, it's trying to document every slave on every ship that sailed across the Atlantic. 